2 raised to k factorial designs. So we'll talk about what, what are these designs, what are the models, how do you compute the effects, how do you do the variations, and then we go to, first we start actually with 2 raised to 2 designs, which is very simple. And then we go to 2 raised to k designs. So what is a 2 raised to 2 design? Um, first of all, 2 raised to k design means you have k factors each at 2 levels. k factors each at 2 levels. So you might have like in the example that we are talking about, you might have two CPUs, two workloads, two users, so on and so forth. So there are many of such lists and those are, each of them is a factor, but each of them has only two, two values. Yeah. Right now we are just talking, right now we are just, so the question is what about continuous? So we already talked about continuous. Continuous is all regression. Alright. So now we are going to talk about categorical and then in the real world you will have a combination of these some categorical some this one but for the next few chapters just assume everything is categorical first I have to start with something simple thing is we have to start with simple linear regression before we got into you know, all this transformation and other things same thing here experimental design I want to start with something simple that you can understand so we are talking about 2 raised to k design and this is not the only design there, there are 4 other 5 chapters to go so helps in starting starting out the impact of the factor. This is good at the beginning of a study. So when you start a study, two raised to k designs are good because then you just do two extremes. Valid only if the effect is unidirectional. So if you know that the effect is unidirectional as opposed to if it is like this, then you are going to miss conclusion because you are saying you will say that the effect is very small when it could be very large. All right. So, if it is unidirectional, then 2 raised to k designs are good. In this case, you really need 3 levels minimum. One here, one here, one there maybe. So, here is a design. Here is an exp uh, basically in some sense example that we measured the performance in MIPS for 2 memory sizes and 2 cache sizes. Alright, and now we are going to decide, divide, this. we are going to have two variables x a is minus one if this is the memory and plus one if this is the memory x b is minus one if this is the cache size and plus one if this is the cache size now we could do a simple regression just like we did before and have the model which is y is equal to q0 q a q b q a b and q a q b and all that like that like that we write down the four equations 15 is equal to whatever the value of a and b, x a and x b are and 45 equal to 25 equal to so on and so forth and we can solve these four equations for four unknowns straight forward four equations and four unknowns and you will get that q0 is 40 and q a is 20 and so you will get that y is equal to 40 plus 20 x a plus 10 x b plus 5 x a x b alright so how do you interpret this model this model says that the mean performance is 40. But if you choose x a, depending upon the x a, the performance could go up by 20 or down by 20. If x a is plus 1, it is plus 20. If it is x a minus 1, minus 20. So the effect of memory is 20. Cache size has the other effect. That if it is plus one, it is plus ten. If it is minus one, it is minus ten. So the effect of cache is ten MIPS. And then x a, x b, depending upon what the memory size and what the cache size is, the performance could be plus five or minus five. So the interaction, so the interaction between memory and cache is five. So now you see the interaction. Basically, this is the effect of A, this is the effect of B, this is the interaction A and B. This. All right, now the thing is that, how did I solve those equations? I mean, you can solve those equations, it's not a very difficult thing by subtracting, adding, but there's a simpler method. Is a tabular method, is that you write down a table in which you write down A, B, and you start with 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and whatever we do in binary table, but instead of 0, just write a minus 1. So minus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, one, and, and one, one. Write down the y values in that order. And then solve the equations. Um, 
actually the equations will come out like this but um, better for me to go through an example and tell you how to do this thing let me just go through an example is that you write down a table with um, a b as we said and but add two more columns an i column which is identity column write all ones and a product column a b column which you, you write the product of the two two terms now you write down the y column now each column you take with the vector you just take this i vector and the y vector multiply them and add the sum so that this is 160 is basically 1 times 15 plus 1 times 45 plus 1 times 25 plus 1 times 75 is 160 then you do the a column and the y column minus 1 times 15 plus 1 times 45 minus 1 times 25 plus 1 times 75 you get 80 and so on and so forth how, how do you get i i is all ones a b is the product of a b all right then you divide because you take taken the four rows here divide by four then you get this mean of that column all right those are the effects 40 is the mean effect of a is 20 effect of b is 10 effect of interaction a and b is 5 how do you get the total you mean this total line this is just the sum of the product okay one more time you take this vector multiply with this vector that comes out to 160 take this vector and that vector sum comes out to 80 now we talk about the variation so we have to do SST, SSE, SSR, all those things, right? So let's do that. So the variation, the variance is we know y bar minus y i minus y bar whole square. In this case, there are only four values. So we can just do that and divide it by three because y bar was estimated from the same values. So one degree of freedom will last. So you can, so that is your total variation without before the model and um, it turns out after the model there is no variation left because there is no error in this model by the way as you will see notice in, in a minute so basically the total variation is equal to and you can I mean we can prove that mathematically is equal to 4 times QA square plus 4 times QB square plus 4 times QAB square so we are saying that this part is, a, is explained by the A, this part is explained by the B, this part is explained by the interaction. So we call this SSA, we call this SSB, we call this SSAB. So SSAB is simply 4 times QAB square, the QAB is this value here 5. SSA is 4 times QA square, the QA is this value 20 right there, those are the effects. So the fraction of explained by A is SSA upon SST. So the A effects explains this fraction of the variation. Now remember I am going to use the word variation not variance. Because variance was that but variation is this part. Right? Variation does not have that denominator. Alright. So the derivation is actually straightforward. I don't know whether I really need to go through the derivation here in the class. But one of the things that helps here is that the way we wrote down these columns, instead of writing 0 and 1, we wrote down minus 1 and plus 1. So all the columns add up to 0 except for the i. So this a column adds up to 0, b columns adds up to 0, a b column adds up to 0. So, so x a i is 0, x b i sum is 0, x a b i sum is 0. And another property is that sum of all the squares of all the columns is 4, which is clear because we have only ones there. When you square them and add them, you get 4. If you use those two properties and then the product of each column is, product of any two columns is zero. That's another interesting property. If you take A and multiply it by AB and you add them up, you will get a zero. If you take A and multiply by B and add them up, you will get a zero. You take B and AB, it will be zero. So they're all, the products are all zero. So basically when you take by I and when you sum it up, you get an equation which says sum of y i will be equal to q0. Everything else will cancel out. When you take y i minus y r square, everything else will cancel out. Only thing we left is the q a square, q b square and q a b square four times each of them. 
everything else cancels out because all the product terms are zero. So anyway, in the memory cache study, cases and per cache study, we can say that this total variation, which was um, 2100, can be divided into three parts. First part is this, second part is that, and third part is this. And first part is 76% can be explained by memory, 20% can be explained by cache, and 5% is due to interaction. So what that says is, if you really wanted to optimize this variable, which is the performance in MIPS, the first thing you really need to work on is the memory. Because memory really gives you the best change. Then you worry about the cache. And then worry about the interaction. Now, in a practical sense, I would say that I would not worry about this interaction. We'll say, okay, all right, this is there, but this is small, 5%. Cash is kind of expensive, so it's good that it doesn't have that much effect, so I'm not going to worry about the cash. If I want to improve the performance of my computer, I would go and buy more memory, if this data were true. Right? Memory is cheap and has more effect. You have four values measured. You get four parameters out of it, Q0, QA, QB, and QAB. And then you can divide the variation into three parts at least. And then you can say what is the variation due to A, what is the variation due to B, and what is the variation due to AB. It's quite possible that in your next set of experiments, you will not even worry about cash. You will just worry about 80% and see what is the effect of memory. Is it is linear or is it non-linear or what it is? Because that is what you really need to understand. Right? But right now we got two extremes. With two level design, all you get is two extremes. So you know that this point and this point are 80% away. Now you need to worry about exploring that space between those two. These are very point results. I mean, there are many other things we'll talk about in a minute. I mean, not in a minute, in, in the next few chapters, where we will talk about what is the advantage of replication, what is the advantage of more than two levels, and um, so, I mean, this is just four experiments we did, and we didn't do any replication. It's quite possible that these values have a lot of randomness in themselves. Right? So there are more complicated stuff coming in. But first thing you notice is that now, with, given the same data, people would have made you know, some statements from this data, but they would not have said that memory is really 80% effect. Now you can make that statement. Now right now, let's say single experiment. So replication will come later. So you think if you were, if suppose 15 was the average of five copy, five then we would say, then there's a two raised to k r design. R is the number of replications, which is another design which is coming up. Oh, you measured it. You just measured it once and they came out 15. You measured it once. But at least, you know, I'm just saying that with one experiment, this is the information you got and this is the conclusion you made. In the, in the next chapter, we'll talk about 2 raised to k r design. So we'll say, what is it that if you do more than one replication? Right? So, but we are not talking replication right now. The thing is, there are two ways to get that, whether it is unidirectional or, you know, bimodal or, you know, parabolic or whatever it is. You have to somehow get it from the system knowledge or, you know, just you have to do a lot more than two levels then.